Hello my friends and welcome to my video about the coins of early Christianity, its development and its progression to the Byzantine times where you have such beautiful gold coins as this featuring Jesus Christ. So let's start with the beginning. Let's start with the biblical ancient coins. Right here we have what is called a widow's might. There was a poor widow and she only had a couple of these pieces. These were the lowest denomination coins possible. So she had only two of these little widow's mites and she wound up giving them during a religious service and pretty much Jesus said that even though there were other people giving, let's say, gold coins, that because she gave her all, that it was not uh, the, the size of the gift that counts, it's the thought that counts, that she gave her all rather than uh, the, some people that may have thousands of gold coins and they gave maybe one. So that's a very interesting coin. So this is a widow's mite. Next, you have Jesus Christ. They try to get him into trouble. So there was a whole question of taxation. And they came to Jesus with a coin that is known as the tribute penny. With the tri tribute penny, uh, they pretty much pose a question, you know, should we be paying taxes? And what happened was when uh, Jesus asked, hey, can I see the coin, please? And then he just asked him the question, whose name is on the coin? And they say Caesar. So he says, render unto Caesar all that is Caesar and render unto God all that is God's. So this is a, one of the tribute penny types. What is actually interesting is that there's several different interpretations about which coin was used in the Bible specifically as a tribute penny. But the evidence actually shows that this coin of Augustus with the two brothers, uh, Caius and Lucius on the back, is the most likely candidate. Watch my other video in regards to the tribute penny. I made a whole video in regards to this subject. So this is a very interesting tribute penny coin. Okay, so Jesus is you know w making um you know a lot of great teachings he's uh getting a lot of followers and um you know judas you know the one that betrays jesus gets approached and he winds up actually getting 30 pieces of silver to betray jesus christ so this is one of the two likely candidates of the 30 pieces of silver this is a, a silver tetradrachm with uh, the portrait of Augustus from the city of Antioch. And it features in the back uh, the goddess Tyche, which is the goddess of the city, with the river flowing underneath. And there's even a, you know, a whole bunch of uh, text written around in Greek. So this, or what is known as the shekel of Tyre, is another likely candidate. Uh, so, this is one of the types, and it's very interesting tone, and um, very beautiful. So, he gets betrayed, you know, sold off, gets arrested, right? And then, you have Pontius Pilate. Under Pontius Pilate, Jesus Christ gets brought for trial and execution. The mob, instead of deciding to uh, let Jesus Christ go... Uh, in the stead of a, you know, of, a, of a, someone that was actually a real bad person, uh, they decided to have Jesus Christ be crucified. And this is a coin from one of the last years of uh, Jesus', Jesus death or during you know, his crucifixion time under the procurator Pontius Pilate, who was in Jerusalem. So this is a very important, historically significant, biblically significant, and significant to the Christian people. So, Jesus Christ is crucified, but the Christian sect remains. It keeps growing. Uh, it keeps getting followers in, you know, even in Rome. 
So what's interesting about the Christians is they kind of kept to themselves. And you have Nero, this is a coin of Nero, and uh, he wants to build a great uh, palace for himself. But the only problem is people were living in the place where he wants to build the palace. Uh, the palace where he uh, the wound up building was after, you know, what is believed to be after setting uh, Rome on fire. You know, the whole concept of uh, Nero fiddles as Rome burns. There's uh, several different accounts. And afterwards, uh, for setting of the fire, uh, he found some really great uh, patsies, uh, or, you know, pretty much the Christians. The early Christians, they were, you know, you know, tortured and killed and, um, you know, put to death in uh, gladiatorial type of games, you know, against wild beasts and things like this. So Nero wound up building his great palace. Uh, and that's the place actually where uh, the Colosseum stands to this day. You know, after after he was, uh, you know, after he committed suicide, the Colosseum was built there also. So it's kind of interesting that people kind of visit almost the place where uh, Nero lived. So very important, significantly, uh, historically significant character, Nero, to the whole biblical narrative. Also, he was there during the time of St. Paul, who was uh, spreading Christianity th uh, throughout the ancient world. I have a whole video in regards to the different cities he visited, um, that, but that's a topic for another time. So, Nero is 54 to 68 AD. So, we're talking about lifetime of Jesus Christ, coins circulating, these, then Pontius Pilate, crucifixion, then the persecution of the Jewish uh, of the Christian people, and now what we have actually is a coin from the city of Nicaea. The city of Nicaea is important as that is where the Council of Nicaea was that created Christianity uh, in its uh, religious form that it is today. The Council of Nicaea was held circa 325-326 A.D under Constantine the Great. So right here we have a coin of Nicaea, a little bit before Constantine, but it's still interesting to collect. These are very, very inexpensive. You could pick yourself up an ancient coin from Nicaea uh, rather inexpensively. Depends on also the quality. The quality of, a, of an ancient coin is also uh, determines its value. But what's interesting about this type, this is a coin of Constantine the Great, is where he's actually gazing up towards God. This is this is concurrently with the Council of Nicaea. But the interesting story, though, with Constantine is that why he turned to Christianity. He had a great battle with Maxentius at the Milvian Bridge. And he kind of prays for divine intervention, uh, for, you know, praise to God. And he sees a symbol. And um, pretty much he was told... By this symbol, you shall conquer. So what wound up happening is that he wound up painting the Cairo, the Christogram, which is the Jesus Christ monogram, which are the two letters of uh, Jesus Christ, Christos. Um, and um, they painted it on the shield and wound up winning a great victory. This is a very interesting type as it actually features the Cairo in its full size and beauty on the nice, beautiful bronze coin of the Sentius. This is a little bit later, but you see, um, you know, Constantine the Great was 307 to 337, and the Sentius is a little bit later, uh, 351. You see already Christianity taking hold and a coin such as this being issued. So this symbol, the Cairo, the Christogram, or the Christ monogram, is uh, then used on many coins of the ancient Roman Empire after Constantine the Great. And even during, he, he has used that thing. You see, for, for example, on this coin of Emperor of Valens, a little bit later from 364 to 378, you have the emperor, the victorious emperor, dragging a captive by the head and he has the Cairo symbol this symbol on the standard that is actually called the labarum the labarum is 
the banner, um, the Cairo painted on top of that. So, moving on to another iconography of the Cairo. See, the, on this coin, there is a Cairo being inscribed by a victory. Victory is an ancient goddess that is the prototype of the winged angels that Christians are used to. You see, but you see the Cairo. The winged angel is inscribing the Cairo X uh, piece kind of symbol. Uh, very interesting. And this is a coin of Aelia Flacilla. My understanding is that she's also known as one of the saints. It's a beautiful, larger bronze piece. Now, moving on. This is a coin of Constantine's mother, Helena. Helena is also known as Saint Helena. She is very much responsible for the spread of Christianity. And uh, very, very nice to actually own her coin too. I have a whole article. This is a rarer type, especially with this, uh, with this uh, star on the reverse. That's a rare type of hers. Coins of Constantine the Great. Helena are rather inexpensive. A lot of these coins are rather inexpensive unless you get them in like perfect mint condition. But even then, you, you could still uh, get them reasonably inexpensively. So, we're seeing the progression of Christianity moving forward. At this point in time already, we're talking about from circa 425 to 435 AD, you already have these tiny small bronze coins featuring the cross. The cross is then a motif later used in the Byzantine Empire quite frequently. So, moving on from, you see also the, the deterioration of the Roman Empire's coinage until it's, um, you know, sack and destruction. But then the Byzantines wound up actually in their own style, um, making nice big bronze and gold coins um, and silver and a whole bunch of other different denominations. This is an interesting type where we're talking about um, where it's a nice big bronze coin with the portrait of Jesus Christ and on the back you have Virgin Mary. Jesus Christ was featured on uh, quite a quite a lot of ancient Byzantine coins, along with the various different saints, such as Saint George, Saint John, Saint Michael, and many others. Now, progressing forward, I'm going to just show you just three types just that feature Jesus Christ on them. This, I have to also note, you see this? Anonymous Class G. There is a series uh, from A to N, you know, this is classified, you know, in modern times, obviously. It doesn't say Class G on this coin. But um, this is a whole series to collect of nice big bronze coins from, uh, a sir, from around a hundred year period under various different Byzantine emperors that feature his portraits. You should watch the other video in regards to these types of coins. But moving on to some beautiful gold coins that feature Jesus Christ. So, you can see on the tag, we're talking about from circa 913 AD. You have Jesus Christ, uh, you know, Nimbate, you know, he has a halo around his head. And he's holding the book of Gospels, the you know, the holy book uh, for Christians. And on uh, the back, you see the... You know, the dynasty, the emperor and his, uh, you know, uh, son that's growing up that he's going to be uh, grooming for imperial um, progression. So, this is one type. And after a while, gold coins and bronze coins wound up moving on to more of a, you could say, skiffate. You see, they're kind of like cup-shaped um, coins, but this one features Jesus Christ. And um, rather interesting. This is a beautiful condition. And you see it says Is Hus. You see it doesn't say Jesus in um, you know Greek. It's more of a Greek, Is Hus. So it says Jesus on the side. And he's also holding the Book of Gospels. Beautiful gold coin on the back here of the Emperor. Holding a, a globe with a cross on top. And um, standard. See this is a... Ancient Byzantine coin. And you see as 
the Byzantine Empire progressed towards its downfall in the 1450s. You have the the styles also kind of slightly degrade. The, the, the coinage isn't as beautiful and elaborate as earlier. But it's still beautiful with Jesus on it. So th there's a few more Jesus Christ coins. So this has been my overview of Christianity being told through the different coinage. My name is Elias Loban. I'm looking forward uh, to dealing with you soon. I have a lot more videos on my YouTube channel. I recommend subscribing. Subscribe to my email list where I'll send you more articles with videos like this and much more. Looking forward to dealing with you, my friends. See you soon. Bye-bye.